Welcome to Beyond the Sermon podcast, where we hope to stir your faith by pulling truths from the sermons at Believer's Fellowship and discussing them here together. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Sermon. I am your host, Heather Alagato, and we continue this series, Covenant Blood and Body. And I want to introduce you to my two BF. F friends, my Believers Fellowship friends, <laughs> Kelly Cunningham Hello. and Angel McGee. Hello. So. I'm very excited to be here to discuss this today. Me yeah. too. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I told them I love when girls are on here because it's just, I don't know, you just get giddy it's inside. It's more fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is more fun. <laughs> girls, just, okay. Oh. But, um... <laughs> Different podcast. Um, so in the part two, or actually it's part three, yeah. Dan Bean um, was ministering to the church and he he started talking about receiving the covenant, the principles of the covenant. Um, he went into the steps. He, he really just talked and, and, and taught in that aspect. He did an amazing job. I think all of us had like five pages of notes. You know, we could go just any direction here. Um, one of the, the points, though, that I kind of stopped on for a while, maybe two days, was when he talked about receiving the covenant. And I've never thought about that or maybe just, you know, for, forgot or thought about that. But re- when I think of receiving, I think, you know, of a gift um, or someone's going to give me something. And if I were to receive something, I would have to know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, if God were to say, you know, did you receive that? You know, I'd be, I would need to know, well, what receive what? Right. And so I just kind of camped on that thought was, do I receive the covenant and how do I know that I'm receiving the covenant? Sure. And what is, and the what covenant? is, and what yeah. is the covenant? Mm-hmm. Um, so in the first podcast, we had already laid down that foundation of its two parties, um, and then when, whenever he was saying, God, let, don't, or don't be offended to take from the Lord. Um, and I think of like a big lavish table of God, you know, and I said it in the first one and I, I think we're going to expound more here, but you could think I've got the short end of the straw here. God, you've yeah. brought all this stuff. What mm-hmm. can I bring? Mm-hmm. Right. And, but it's ourselves. It's our yeah. heart. It's believing, you know, we do bring something, but, um, you know, he's not offended. Mm -hmm. He's not offended when when we take. Right. Yeah. Um, the scripture that, that, um, brother Dan was saying that goes with that is first Peter 1 20. And it says he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world. And in the NLT version, it says God chose him as our ransom long before the Mm -hmm. world began. And so he, before he was even put here, he knew we needed him. Yeah. He knew he wanted us to want him. And so um, he said, he's not offended. He knew, he already knew that he was going to be the giver and that we were going to be the taker. But we don't want to look at it. We don't want to think of it. We want to say, I'm receiving. But God's also saying, take it. Yeah. And, you know, we look at taking as an, in a negative way. In the, in the human realm. Yeah, human like perspective. Like they're always taking, taking. Mm-hmm. So taking and receiving, it's the same, but just so when you say it, it just sounds so different. Taking seems so harsh and receiving seems kind, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, but he just want, he just said he was planned before the world began. Mm-hmm. I'm giving and I want you to take. Yeah. You know, yeah. in one of, I think it's Mark 11, um, not sure, but the word receive or take or, or translated mm-hmm. together yeah, um, yeah. means the same thing to take, mm-hmm. to receive. So, you know, we can, we can take, it is our right. Yeah. It is our covenant yes. right to take, to take. what yeah. belongs to us right. um, and to live in a, a dominion, a um, authoritative um, lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah. I like that definition of covenant that that Pastor Dan gave in his sermon. He said that you would put a scar 
yeah. on your yes. arm. Yes. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Like every time you get into covenant yeah. with somebody, you put that scar on your arm. And so if you are feeling attacked by somebody, mm-hmm. you just rip it up. Yeah. Yeah. You see all these scars yeah. I got, you're going to really come against uh-huh. And you don't know who it is. Yeah. You don't know who it is. Exactly. So yeah. if they have like seven scars, uh-huh. I think he talked about some guy that had like I just imagine him having scars from his wrist to his elbow. They could be big armies. You don't know. Right. Or not. You, have, yeah. you, you just raise your hand up and you tell them, I'm, I'm in covenant. I'm in covenant. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, you will. You just uh-huh. you know, I don't know. And he <laughs> said that our scars, they're, it's on our hearts. It's on our yes. hearts. We've been marked on our hearts. Yes. And I was thinking, he didn't say where Jesus' scars were, but you know where they were. They're his yeah. hands. His yeah. sacrifice. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Somebody told me that in a sermon years ago. I heard them say that when you raise your hands in worship, he is raising his hands in the heavens too. And he's saying, we're in covenant. You remember the Indians when they would say, how? You yes. know, like when they greet, they're showing their scars where they slit themselves and they wow. blood covenanted Mingled together. Blood. And so I'm saying, see my scars. We're in covenant together. And when we raise our hands to Jesus, mm-hmm. I'm saying, I'm in covenant with you. Yes. I'm in covenant so, with you. Remember, remember like your that. promise to me. Yeah. And he's saying, yep. I got the, I got the holes. Mm -hmm. I love that when Jesus rose from the dead and appeared back to the disciples. Oh, and he he said, still had him. Yeah. Like his body was healed because they had beaten him Mm. so bad. It says chunks of his flesh were ripped from his body and his body was healed, but he still put your hand in my side. Mm -hmm. Put your hand in the holes. Feel the holes. See the holes. I believe in Revelation and even talks about his holes. He uh, still so has. He the saw scars. the Lamb of God, the holes in his feet. Um, I don't Love know where it's it. from, but it's all about that covenant. It was actually my husband that preached that. Ooh. That you, he told me, you got to say this, and I was like, well, I'm not going to say that. And then you say it, so he'll be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> I I was kind of um, when Dan said the heart, I thought that's odd. You know, just, but I thought of that scripture, God removes the stony heart. In the Old Testament. Yes, uh-huh. it gives you a heart of flesh. Heart of flesh. Seals us with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, th- when God sees us, he sees, I'm in covenant. Yes. That is my child. Yeah. Um, they have the spirit inside of them. And so the Lord is bound yeah. to, to that agreement, um, the, the two-sided mm-hmm. um, contract. And what was the other one? Covenant. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The difference. Yeah. Yes. The difference. Yeah. Um, contract is conditional. Uh huh. Covenant is non-conditional. Not just like by choice. It's, it is. It's by choice. Yes. yes. By choice. It's That's by so choice. Good, good, yeah. good word. Good yeah. choice of words. Yeah. I like that a lot. You had something that you wanted to say about it. You said. Well, I was reading how well, I was, I was, I was looking at the different covenants that God has set up through time. God made a covenant with Noah. Mm-hmm. And remember, um, brother Dan talked about, um, Jonathan and David's covenant together. Yeah. And God made a covenant with Abraham to bring a, a people, mm-hmm. many nations from mm-hmm. him. And God made a covenant with David and God made a covenant with the New Testament believers that mm-hmm. believe on Jesus. He makes a covenant with us. He's made many covenants throughout the time. And, but he says, if, so this is one verse that I want to read to you. It's Exodus 19, five and six. And it basically says that we choose to be in covenant with God. That's right. We choose it. Mm-hmm. Um, he says that God promises to treasure us as his people if we'll keep covenant with him. He says, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples for all the earth is mine. And you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. If, 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 but if you choose not to be in covenant with God, then we await a fiery hell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell us, tell us how you told us before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell us, it. tell us Say that. It. You're talking about Hold on to your seats, like We reject guys. the covenant. This is what happens. <laughs> is Psalms 11. Okay. You want it? I'm going to give you all of give Psalms us the 11. Fire. Yeah. Brimstone. I fire. only read to you verse six before and you were making fun of me, but I just want you to know, I did not actually write the book of Psalms. I think it was only funny because <laughs> Angel and 
I were talking about, oh, God's so good. And then she's like, in hell and fire. And we're like, whoa. Yes. Praise God. But it's true. He is it's good. the word. Yes. He's, He's a merciful. just, but he is a just God. And I, that, that's yes. what I hear. And like Angel said, yeah. we don't deserve it. I, he yeah. get, what, what'd you say? We get the short, we gave the short end of the stick. You feel that way. Cause he, he says, okay, we're making a covenant together and he can protect you and he can bless you and he can give to you. And well, think about this. I really can't do any of that for him. Abraham, I yeah. he had to put Abraham to sleep to cut covenant with him. And we couldn't, um, do, we couldn't be the one, the lamb. Jesus had to lay his deity right. down. Mm-hmm. So we, we couldn't. We, we, we could no, do our blood was nothing. not clean. <laughs> no, we're sinful. Right. Yeah. We had to accept. We had to choose to accept. Remember covenants, two sided, two yep. people. Mm-hmm. God will never. We fail. exchange our robes. He said, he said, <sighs> yes. he said, we took on the robe, Jesus's robe and he took our robe of sin yep. and he exchanged. So whenever we're walking around, we, people see Jesus. Yeah. When you come in the yes. room. I see Jesus. And because that's you have on his robe. Yeah. Robe of righteousness. Yeah. Yep. 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 That was um, the covenant that Jonathan and David made together. Yeah. Um, yes. Brother Dan brought that out that Jonathan was wearing royal robes. The robe of a prince. Yes. And David was a shepherd. A shepherd. Yeah. So what did they change? Do you remember the nine? They changed yes. clothing. Yep. They yep. changed names. They changed so his ring. Nine steps. Take yep. off the coat or robe. So I'm giving you all myself. My filthy rags. And yep. he gives me a robe of righteousness. righteousness. Take yep. off belt, which yep. the belt yes. represented strength. Because mm-hmm. it holds the sword. Yep. yep. I will fight for you. Ugh. Um, yeah. The cut, the covenant, we talked about that. Oh, I wanted to mention on that, that God fights for us mm-hmm. because vengeance is his. We don't have to defend ourselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then step three, cut the covenant. Um, in doing so, we are saying two things. We're saying that we are dying to ourselves, mm-hmm. giving up the rights of our own life. Living sacrifice. Yep. New life. We're, yeah. A, a brand new spirit, a brand new mm-hmm. creature that never existed. Uh, raise, number four, raise the right arm in mixed blood. So that was the cutting. Yep. Um, cause there's different covenants I learned, but I'll this is a with blood. My right arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <hallelujah. laughs> um, exchange names, step yes. five. I take, um, they would take the, each other's last name mm-hmm. and add it on. So we but, take on his name. But what, um, Pastor Dan was saying there, I loved how he said it because he said, I'm no longer just Dan. I'm Dan, a child of God. That's right. And that, because he changed my name. He changed so I'm not name. just Dan. Like, Abram was changed to Abraham or however. Yes. Now we it gives are you a new angel, name. a child of God. Angel Ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hem. Angel Hem. Angel Hem. <laughs> hem. <laughs> hem. <laughs> Number six was make a scar, which we uh-huh. talked about that so that it's we on can... our hearts. Mm-hmm. And then seven, give covenant terms. This is where you would yeah. say, all my assets are yours, all my money's yours, and you would, you would, establish what are our terms in our covenant step eight you eat a meal meal mm-hmm. oh like communion. together yeah. yes you break bread together and then step nine is you plant a memorial as a, a, rem- a rem- like making an altar we need to go plant a tree um i was thinking about how have i done that memorial in my own personal life and i was brought back to a time recently and when i was in youth group where we would bring all of our CDs. Oh yeah. All mm-hmm. of our rock and roll t-shirts yes. mm-hmm. and, and burn, burn them in the them. fire. Yeah. And it was really? me saying, I'm parting with my old way and I'm choosing to wear the Jesus t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm identifying with Christ. Um, carrying your Bible, identifying yourself. Oh, that's good. As a temple. Of Not the just Holy on the Ghost. inside, but on the outside. Right. Not just on the inside, but on the outside. And we have so many opportunities to violate our covenants. Mm -hmm. You know, as as a a worshiper, we were talking about this earlier. We we are living our life in worship. And you you know this. We all that have 
committed our hearts to Christ, you are talking to him. You're in the store. You say, oh, I found this shirt. And you're just talking to the Lord because yeah. he's your friend. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. And then he's like our husband. He's our love. And then we have these opportunities mm -hmm. to cheat, to commit I, I, adultery. Yep. I was just about to say <laughs> yes. adultery. Yes. So what happens? Yes. So somebody drives up in your driveway and says, hey, where have you been? You are missing out. When is the last time you've gone out and had a good time? Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you how good it's been. And you can choose to commune. Not that the people, not, but it's they the did, spirit. Yes. It's the Holy Spirit that you've been communing with and and you choose to ignore his fellowship. How would you like yeah. someone to say, Hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out with somebody else, your husband. I'm gonna go out with another woman. He would die. <laughs> because in covenant, someone has to die. I'm only being scriptural. Only That's being a good scriptural. One. Okay, yeah. well, then let me tell you about the fire and the burning coals. This is Psalms 11. So it says, um, it says, I, I trust in the Lord for protection because that's our covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, oh, run, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? The wicked are stringing up their bows and they're putting their arrows out. They're going to shoot from the shadows and the foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? Well, listen to this. This is what it says. It says, but the Lord is is in his holy temple and the Lord still rules from heaven and he watches everyone closely examining every person on earth and the Lord examines both the righteous and the wicked he hates those who love violence if you're not in covenant he hates them he hates them he will <laughs> this is verse six bring it <laughs> he will rain down burning blazing coals and burning sulfur on the wicked punishing them with scorching winds for the righteous lord loves justice and the virtuous will see his face yeah. people could read that and think gosh god is so mean but yeah. i read mm -hmm. that and think you know and He's study jealous. covenant he is, he is a jealous God for me. Yes. And now, and we're jealous of the things of God. We want everything God has. We, yeah. we should not be afraid to take. Right. And the same way that we got into covenant is the same way we stay in covenant. We mm. got into yep. this thing by faith. By faith. We stay mm -hmm. in it by faith. Mm -hmm. It's not about our performance, as you said, Angel. It's not yeah. about works. When you make it about works, you you are just, you're a miserable yeah. Christian because yeah. God's like, oh, I wish, you know, yeah. they would just receive. Well, that's what he said. He said, God will let you get it on your own. He'll let you. Your finances, your healing, whatever it is, he'll let you try to get it on your own and you'll be miserable. Yeah, mm. trying and trying. And it could take so much longer than if you just give it to God and let him take care of it. And he's like, finally, yeah. I've been waiting for <laughs> yeah. you to just let me handle it. If we could do it. it on our own, Jesus would not yeah. have came. The gospel wouldn't be wouldn't the gospel, mm -hmm. you know. And so to understand covenant, I love that Dan said that in, in both his, his parts. He mm -hmm. said it in both of them. You have to understand covenant. When you understand covenant, you can love better. You can serve better. You yeah. can yeah. just, yeah. just everything is better. You're not trying to work at being worthy right? for, for God. Yeah. You already are. I, you talked about David and Jonathan a little bit. I want to go back there because yes. Um, yes. when you cut covenant, some, the terms were you were typically the blood covenants were typically um, it's for you and your seed. And the yeah. only way to get out was to die. Right. Right. And so when Jonathan and David, they just had this beautiful draw in the to each other. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we're going to cut covenant. I want to be, you know, your covenant um, friend. Yeah. And Jonathan honored that. David honored that. Mm -hmm. I... It's a beautiful example, if, if you could read. I think it's 1 Samuel 17. Am I right? Did you write that down yeah. anywhere? No, I think First it's 1 Samuel, Samuel 17. 17. That sounds Where, right. Um, David and Jonathan cut covenant together. Yes. And it wasn't just with the two of them. It was with their house, yes. with their whole yes. lineage. Yep. Yep. And so when Saul and Jonathan both died in the fight together, yeah. yes. David said, 
I have covenant with your house. And I appreciate that David respected the people and respected the the kingship and waited to take his place until it was right. But even before that, when you were saying about the exchange of the robes, even then, Jonathan honored and respected him as king. Yes. Even though Jonathan was the next in line to become the king. Amazing. He knew. But he, was he going knew to be that king. David was going to take that place. Even before he passed away, he knew yeah. already that With I love that. Yeah, yeah. That's humility to just be okay with To that. give up his right to the throne to be king. And he gave it to. A shepherd. Yeah. He gave it to his friends. But he the one honored who they, what Samuel the prophet had said. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He respected God. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Because if God says, this is my anointed. Yeah. Jonathan said, then that's it. Yeah. I, I can't win. I, I can't beat God. God. No. He, right. Yeah. So in those days, it was custom to kill the... Is the lineage, lineage. lineage. Yes. thank you yeah the oh. whole seed so yeah. when david david waited he was respectful and then um david's awesome i love david he was respectful <laughs> and then he went to go look out for jonathan's family well they're thinking oh my goodness they're gonna kill yeah. because that was what the custom that's, the, that's yeah. what they did but he that's not why he remembered i have covenant with jonathan yeah he's dead where's his family mm-hmm. because i have a duty i have a right and yeah. I, and he set them up Beautiful. I mean, he was the king. He took care of his family. Um, and Jonathan's I just love son got that. to live in the castle. I know. Yeah. I like that. I like the way, excuse me, that um, Pastor Dan said, he had a choice. He could say, oh, no, that's not me. I don't know who Jonathan, I'm not his son. You know, <laughs> I don't know who that is. Jonathan, who? King, what? You know, yeah. and choose to live in fear and in poverty. In Lodibar, where there was no word, there was no revelation, there was no They life. were hiding. He was in hiding and in fear of his life. But he said, he chose to say, no, it's me. Well, the servant girl told him. The servant Here girl told David. Because she's the one who was led him them. to her. Or led David to Mephibosheth. Because she's the one who had hit him. The one who dropped him? The servant, yes. Mm-hmm. The servant girl. Can you imagine? She probably felt so bad. Yeah. Well, she thought I felt, she was I feel bad for her when I read the story. She was trying, but out of fear. Right. She dropped him because she was afraid and she's running. She was running. Yeah. And out of fear. And that just reminds us. Yeah. Like that psalm I read to you. You should go. You should run and hide for your life. And David says, no. Mm-hmm. The Lord, I'm in covenant. Mm-hmm. The Lord is my protector. Mm-hmm. Look, see my scars? Yeah. David and Goliath. Yes. David went to the camp and he would bring his brother's things. And then he heard of Goliath Mm -hmm. and he was like, who's this Philistine coming against the uncircumcised uncircumcised Uh Philistine? That right there um, proves that David understood their covenant with yes. God. Yeah. He didn't care how big he was. He knew mm. we're in covenant with the Lord. It doesn't matter about how big he is. God, like you said, Kelly, is our defender. He fights for us. That's yeah. our, that's the belt. That's a great part. revelation yeah, David had. That's and right. I, I need to remind myself of that. Yes. Today, I had a lot of stuff happening. I had a lot of opportunities to be afraid, to be nervous, to be angry, to be frustrated. And I was like, okay, God, help you? me today. No. I, like, I, had to <laughs> like, I had a lot on my list, you know, on my plate. I was like, God, help me. I need you to help me. And he was like, I am your helper. I sent you the Holy Ghost. He is your helper. And he's in you. And I was like, yes, thank you. I have the whole, you are my helper. Mm-hmm. And do you know, he set me up so beautifully today. <laughs> it just turned out lovely. I even took a nice <laughs> love.